Do you remember earlier this year when you first heard about a new and mysterious virus? Journalist Ethan Liu does. He was in China visiting family. And that visit turned into his new book, Field Notes from a Pandemic. Ethan joins us this morning. Thanks very much, Ethan. Hi. Hi. So Hi. you went to China as kind of a family vacation because you had just finished another book and this was all meant as a relaxation thing. It did not turn into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is correct. That is definitely one of the weirdest things to ever happen to me. And I think back in January, it was a very different time. And two days before I left, I was literally at a birthday party with lots of people. And and the virus was in the news, but it was, it was sort of this odd little piece of quirky development from somewhere really far away. And, and when I entered the plane, everything was normal. But while I was in the air, literally, uh, the, the epicenter city of Wuhan got sealed off. And, um, you know, I, I entered them in normalcy and I, I kind of just exited to the plague. Right, in, in, that, in that span of a flight. Now, you went to China originally to, to see your grandfather as well, who was, who was dying. Uh, tell us about being in the hospital with your relatives and, and kind of being, or he, it was a, a senior's home, I guess, and being booted out. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually felt very lucky. I, was, I, I went to China on, on the day I did, because if I went just a day or two after that, I would not have been able to see my grandfather at all. Um, the The first day when we got there, they were they were already wearing masks everywhere, and they they took down our our personal details at the door. And as we left, they told us hey, it's it's best that you don't come anymore. And and of course we didn't listen. I, I don't get to see my grandparents often, and you know that was just one visit. We have to go back for another visit. And on the second day, just midway. Midway through the visit, uh, we just got booted out, and they they were very kind about it. But you know, I was holding my grandfather's hand there, and I don't know how much he understands. But you know, as as I was leaving, he sort of gripped my hand with with all the strength that he could muster. Mm -hmm. And then you left. You eventually left China, and you you had a ticket that was going to take you to a number of stops across Europe. And and you say in the book that the virus kind of followed you like a shadow. Mm -hmm. So it, it was quite a surreal experience because I think when I left China, that was that was still early February, and and the world outside was still going on as normal. Um, people in Germany they they were still having soccer matches with tens of thousands of fans, and the the French president and his wife they went to the theater, and I, I think as I write in the book, uh, amid the bustle of everyday life, you no know, nobody could hear the, the low hum of the looming menace. And but slowly it, it started creeping outward from China and I started to feel the uh, I guess the, the social effects in Singapore. But even then, even then, I think I and the rest of the world thought that maybe this was something that was just confined to Asia. And when I landed in Germany, um, everything was still normal and I thought I had escaped the worst of it. But as you know, that 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 was not so. Mm -hmm. you, you write, you compare this plague or pandemic to a number of historic plagues. And, and you say that with every one, there comes worldwide change as a result. What do you think the worldwide change from this pandemic is going to be? Mm. I think broadly uh, that there are a couple of things that we will see. One is that we will see uh, a sort of larger, more walled up, meaner world with ethnic and national lines only to be more starkly drawn. And that arises because of the, of the decline of travel and the decimation of international supply chains. And we will see uh, geopolitical shifts as well, because I think China, which had the virus first and which is quite, it, it recovered quite well. And I think uh, we will see the, the balance of power tilt further toward the East. But I, I think most of all, we will see bigger government because that was what happened after after the historical plagues and after crises. You know, uh, amid the Second World War, we saw Canada gain uh, universal health care, which never went away. Mm -hmm. and as we saw from the throne speech a couple of days ago, uh, this government is shifting particularly toward the left.
Right, right. Okay, Ethan, we have run out of time. I could talk to you so much longer for this story, but it's a, it's a fabulous read, produced very, very quickly. Field Thank Notes you. from a Pandemic by Ethan Liu. Thank you for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure.